we'll go to the second last game we're going to look at and it's probably well it is it's the biggest game of the weekend uh, Donegal and Tyrone it's a game that everyone's looking forward to uh, to see you know this time next week as we were, we were only saying at work here yesterday this time next week either Michael Murphy or Conor McKenna is going to have their feet up watching the championship and not playing in it which is a great shame but at the same time it is what it is Paddy you were there two weeks ago in uh, the uh, Bally Buffet two weeks ago as well wasn't it? Yeah, Bob Buffet two weeks ago and listen, I had Eamon McGee and Joe McMahon on the Ocean FM podcast this week and I just put, put put the same question to both of them, how much will two weeks you know, much will it really matter come Sunday and both of them says absolutely nothing. First of all we know how big the kickouts are nowadays, Tyrone clearly had absolutely nothing they, they didn't give away anything with their kickouts that day it was just hit it down fired out from from Niall Morgan. So I don't think we can read a huge amount into two, uh, two weeks ago. Again, heard from a couple of Gales. They're surprised. Donegal had a fairly strong team out that day. And they feel that maybe Donegal have shown their hand too much. Look, it's whatever way the narrative suits, I think, in GEA. One week, you know, we looked at Mayo a couple of weeks ago and they had that unbelievable victory over Galway. And everybody's raving about them. They're doing this. And they're, they're this... They're the best team, you know, they're in the top two, three again. Then they lose and, you know, ah, it's, it's curtains and that, which, which is rubbish really because it's week on week. And we sometimes get too excited with some victories and we get too down about other victories. So, again, this Sunday is just going to be completely different. I was extremely impressed with Tyrone at the weekend. And I, I wouldn't call it an ambush as such if they came into Bally Buffet and came out with a victory. But... I'd definitely be very, very concerned. I suppose the big question we're all wondering is, what way is Mickey Hart going to play? Mm. We hear people in the national media, the national broadsheets, and they say, why don't they play like they did against Mayo at the weekend? They pushed up high in Clark's kickouts. Uh, the foot passing was unbelievable. Like, we've all seen Throne Club football in the last, uh, you know, where, where, after the resumption, and they have unbelievably talented players. So, Yet against Donegal, they can put 13, 14 back behind the ball, ball for large, large periods. So I personally feel that Mickey Hart's caught between two stools. Which way is he going to go? Eamon McGee thinks it'll be somewhere in between. Um, Connor or Cahill McShane is an unquantifiable asset that they don't have. He is an unbelievable player for Tyrone. And, you know, there's question marks over Paddy McBrearty. Declan Boner said today that he's going to be fine. He hasn't featured in the last couple of weeks. But the truth is there, we probably won't know until 1.30. So perhaps if he doesn't play ostensibly speaking, they will cancel each other out. But Conor McKenna is like a summer signing. You know, we had Mark O'Shea in the, on, on the podcast last week and he was just talking about some players come back and they find it very difficult to adapt if you like to the modern when they come back from Australia you look at the likes of Tommy Walsh it took him quite a while so but McKenna just looks like he's been playing club football over in, uh, he's been playing Gaelic football over in Australia for the last couple of years I think this man in a year or two could be phenomenal yeah, I think he's phenomenal as it is he's got a left he's got a right he's arrogant in a good way and he's the real deal where's he going to play probably somewhere between the 21 and 45, but the matchups are going to be fascinating. And look, it's a huge game. Just finally on that, the, Joe McMahon used to call uh, Bally Buffet Galatasaray. He says he hated coming there. Um, the crowd were on top of you. A bit like Castle Bar. You know those brilliant GAA grounds? There's four or five of them in Ireland. And but that's gone this week. That, that factor's gone. That cauldron, that Coliseum-like thing. And um, it's just going to be one hell of a battle. I'm not sure what the lads think about it, but uh, I'm certainly very nervous anyway. Yeah, Michael, Connor McKenna, as, as Paddy said, is like a summer signing. He's, he's a breath of fresh air into the game and to play against him, I'm sure it's going to be frightening for anyone coming up against him. Yeah, as Paddy was saying there, and I thought it'd take him a bit longer to kind of mm. blend and gel in, but even even in the time of year that we're playing football, he just looks so natural on the ball. Um, he was just a joy to watch last Sunday. Well, not obviously from my open he was, but he, he, um, he, he's just a gift of footballer and to think that he could get better is, is a bit frightening to be honest um, so how good you like his kick pass and his finish and everything about him um, with Donegal he, like I know Stephen Rochford is involved he's an old club mate of my own like, and he's a, again a very intelligent man when it comes to football to think that he would have had one eye on this championship game since coming back from, from lockdown is 
is, is, is a definite. Um, I don't think they want to show their hands too much. I know that the tug's fairly strong that day, but I, I'd say that if something up their sleeve, um, it's going to be an intriguing battle and I'm kind of looking forward to it. Um, I, I was lucky enough to coach Ryan McHugh in the IT there. How long ago was I? I have no concept of time. I think it was six or seven years ago, but he's a Rolls Royce footballer. Like he just is at the cusp of everything that's good about Donegal. And I just love watching him play football. I just think his, his energy, his how he reads the game and how he gets involved in moves is, is excellent. And I think he's usually the difference between teams when it comes down to it. Mm. Uh, can, as a ask, link, can, can I just I, ask I Michael a question? Just the Donegal lads seem to love Rochford and I've spoken to him a few times. He just looks like such a student of the game. And like even to come in as a number two, he's obviously just obsessed with Gaelic football. And what I mean by that is managers, people like some people like the coach, some people like the manager. And to come from such a massive county like Mayo, and obviously he was with Corrafin, but he must be just an absolute academic of the game because I just hear that the Donegal boys absolutely adore him, Michael. Yeah, well, I suppose it's the time he puts into it. But if you're looking, if he's travelling, he's living in Banrobe at the moment, Banrobe, yeah. up to Donegal, under Convoy, or wherever the, the train is, a good two and a half, three hours. Yeah. And, and, you know, it takes a bit of time and you're obviously processing games. I was talking to Paul Dirk in our wedding last year and he was saying that he used to collect him in Donegal Town. They used to travel up together and all they used to talk about was football. Like, even 2012, I, I managed cross Malina for a year or two and Stephen was coming out towards the end of his playing career. And, you know, even in meetings afterwards, I'd always meet the senior kind of players. He'd always have an idea coming for the team that we we're playing. So he obviously eats, drinks and sleeps and he'd have to, you know, if he spends that much time at it. But I suppose he, for players, if they see that enthusiasm, they feed off it as well. And, and they feed off his love of the game and, and it comes across in his coaching, obviously. But it's, it's, I think it would be great for him. I know if personally, if you were coming into the coaching role, you're getting your hands dirty again. Management has kind of changed now where it's more... I suppose, the itinerary of stuff that's going to happen and kind of the thought process there where he can plan of how the team wants to play and where they're playing and things like that. So I'd say he's yeah. loving it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you look at even, like, we'll, talk, we'll keep Rochford for a second. I watched it, like, we'll, the, I, I'm sure you did as well, watched plenty of games of football or highlights of games or something over lockdown, the first lockdown we had. And GA Go brought out so many games as well. I watched, this, this just shows how much of a head Rochford has and like his versatility not only as a coach but as a player as well Michael you might be able to uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this but it, was it the 3 final he played Balanaf cross the line and Stephen Rochford was corner back he played corner forward against Balladrine in 06 that, that was the way he was and I can remember some of the last games he played like yeah, you know he <laughs> I suppose he had to change. Lee Moffat used to be full back and then he moved himself to full forward because like, the game kept changing and these lads adapted to, because of that. But Stephen had this thing where he'd go and it might be five minutes or ten minutes to go in a tight game and he'd go to the side link and they drink a water talk and it could be our kick out and next thing he'll just burst onto the corner. His man has left him and he gets onto a ball. These were just academics of the game. Like We were very lucky to have the likes of like Kerr McDonald, James and Allen, Stephen Rochford, Damien Mulligan, all have gone on to management, but they're all thinkers of the game. Um, he, he was just that way. He was a great reader of the game as a cornerback. Like he wasn't blessed with pace and he won't be delighted for me saying that out loud, but he wasn't blessed with pace ever, but he was always a great reader of the game and that's why he was able to play cornerback. And as the years went on, he went to corner forward. He, again, a great reader just to come on and set up scores and stuff like that. So as Paddy correctly says, he's just an academic of the game. He just loves the game. He'd sit down and watch games all the time, just try and figure, figure problems out. Like So that's what kind of, I suppose, the Donegal players are feeding into at the moment. Just yeah. on that there, sorry, um, I, he, I'm an AIB and, and Stephen is a uh, bank manager in AIB, so like, I, don't, I really don't know how he gets the time to trade a team, or maybe I do. Um, but no, I, the first year I was in the bank, um, we were playing the Army, but like, we, it was an, uh, an annual game against the Army, and like, obviously the Army boys are just super fit, like, they're just ridiculously fit. And I, I didn't know Stephen, and I saw Stephen lining up cornerback against this super fit guy, and I was like, geez, we're badly stuck today now with, with Deflin there. But like, to Michael's point, like, the reading of the game is just insane. Like, he was really good. Now, we, we, got, we got beat, like, but it's just, it just gave me an idea, okay, this flow understands. And I didn't know him at the time, and obviously chatting to him afterwards, you just get a feeling of this fella loves football and this fella knows football. And, and it was just funny that they seen this, and as you say, this someone who wasn't blessed with pace, marking someone who is in the army, and he was beating him to the ball. Like, so it just gave me an idea where he was at. I think I saw it there. He might not have tried it against the army, pal, I'm not sure, but I saw it, Michael, it was that 03. It was either 01 or 03, the county final we watched. I think it was, it was against Ballinat. It might have been Knockmore. I'm not sure where it was, but he started his run. Barry Heffernan put the ball down. Is Barry Heffernan the playing goals for you, wasn't it? Mm. Put the ball down on the tee. And Stephen Rochford makes his run from the number four spot across the 20-metre line. 
and he goes and he takes the kick out and he pings out Paddy Gardner on the far side. Like, you know, you wouldn't even, I know you can't yeah, actually well, do that now, but. There, there, there were things because we had to kind of, and Barry was the best, one of the best goalkeepers in Ireland. If you, if, if you ever get a chance to watch the year one club final, he pulled off four of the best saves I, I've ever seen in my life in Crow Park. Like, but he wasn't blessed with a long kick out. So we kind of had to adapt that. And these were all things, and I know Tommy Jordan wouldn't mind me saying he was our manager at the time that the players came up with. That Stephen and Tom Allen, the likes of them, would have came up with to kind of counteract where our, our weaknesses was. Like, so it was always thinking on their feet. And I suppose that's kind of holds a good stead from now when he's involved in management. And, and I know he's enjoying it up and Donegal. I know he's loving it. So it's, it's working for him. Yeah, and I want to talk just, to you about... Yeah. Go on. I want to talk to you yep. about cross line again, Michael. But um, go on there, Paddy. The reason why the reason why you just uh, I mentioned that to Michael was just about Rochford. It's just Donegal from the restarts, and I think a lot of uh, Rochford seems to be all over. Donegal are very, very strong from the restarts, and this and Sean Patton, uh, a phenomenal player. I mean, he, he he's now in the top three, four players. I think that Donegal have, and I just Donegal put so so much work into the kick out, and when Donegal beat Tyrone last year and Breffney Park before five points that day, they just murdered Tyrone on the kick out. So I'm just wondering, is Mickey Hart, he's going to have to put way, way more focus into it. And look, the lads will know they've played at a much higher level than I have, but the restarts now seems to be something. And he done it for Mayo as well. If you even go back to them big Dublin Mayo games, and I spoke to Jim McGuinness about this before, Mayo actually, Mayo actually came out on top most times in the middle third against Dublin. The problems came and perhaps in other areas. And listen, I thought Mayo were very unlucky under Rochford. I actually watched that to the 17 final again over lockdown. Mayo blatantly had a penalty with about 15 minutes to go. But listen, it's the restarts. And Mayo had that dominance around the middle third because of the restarts. And they are going to be crucial this Sunday, because if Michael Murphy comes out, him and Ryan McHugh, they dovetail very, very nicely. So the big thing is, what is Mickey Hart going to do to curtail that? And listen, I read Cahill Kane's piece yesterday, and I totally agree. Mickey Hart has a big, big dilemma with Michael Murphy. And you get a lot of kind of lazy analysis out there with people saying, ah, just throw Murphy inside. Michael will know. Sometimes if you're playing inside, you're coming up against three, four defenders, and you're completely shot out. And it's just kind of the man down in the pub who says, ah, throw him inside because Pat Spillane once upon a time said he has to be playing inside. So that's where he is. But Murphy now probably spends 50% of the time in the middle third, 50% inside. And that's going to be a big, big problem, I think, for Tyrone. Paddy, if you can take your Donegal hat off for a second, can you call it? Uh, I thought two weeks ago, just before we even met in the league game, I thought Donegal were going to win it by four or five points. Uh, I think I thought Tyrone had a, way too many question marks over them. I'm more and more concerned now. Um, I think Mike, I think Tyrone have struggled with Michael Murphy in the last couple of years. I think he's going to be a huge player for them. Who do they put on Brian McHugh? Probably going to be Connor Myler. He's another man who's been a thorn in their side. Cahill, if Cahill, well, Cahill McChain's not going to be playing, if McBrady's not playing, they cancel each other out. Uh, I think Donegal, if Jamie Brennan, another guy, can go up another level, I think Donegal can just nick it. But I'll tell you something, I, I don't know, I'll have to be brought to hospital if it goes to extra time because I'm very worried. And as the lads already alluded to, it's back to the old days of championship football on Sunday night. Uh, it's going to be a long, it's been a difficult winter for everybody and a difficult summer. It'll be an even longer winter if... If Tony Gall aren't playing championship football uh, on Sunday night, because uh, I don't know what we're going to do if we uh, have to go into depression for a couple of weeks. I go for Donny Gall because I'm from Donny Gall, and I just think we'll nick it. But I'd, I'd be more interested in what the two lads would have to say. They can look at it, this one objectively. Yeah, Pa, if you want to go first there. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would just say that... Um, Trying to, I'd hate to be the two managements trying to prepare for the other team because I've, I don't think I've ever seen two teams that could go any sort of way. Like they could play defensive, they could go all out, they could do different things with kickouts. Like they're and in a day of when so many management teams and players are trying to find out stuff about the other team and seem to find it fairly easily. Like I'd say, Donegal and Tyrone are the two that Jesus, you just, you just, how do you prepare for them? Like. Just if you just go into the head, who do you think is going to win? I think Donegal. Just from and that's going on previous years, not so much in the last two weeks, because obviously there's nothing to go off there. Pure shadow boxing two weeks ago, but just 
from the Super 8 matches that I saw Donegal play maybe a year or two ago and since. They're just a little bit more settled. I think your, McKenna is just an absolute brilliant player to land into it. But it kind of tells you more about Tyrone set up that are they really sure what they're about when, when he's the one now that's the shining light, as good and all as he is, and he's been fantastic. Whereas Donegal, to me, just are that, that little bit further down the road. So mm-hmm. I go for them slightly. Michael? Yeah, I'd have to agree with Pad there. Like, I just think they know each other so well. It's probably going to come down to something outside of their control. It could be a referee's decision or the weather or something like that. It's going to be that tight. My only thing with Tyrone is, like, and we had this a small bit last year, um, where they've changed how they play and then they don't consistently stay with that. So how they played against Mayo last weekend is no reflection on what they're going to do against Donegal next weekend because... They seem to do that a lot. So because it's also football, <clears throat> they could go very defensive. Again, I think it's going to be very tight. I do think Donegal are going to win it, but it may come down to something outside. The, you know, they're, they, they prepare so well and try and cancel each, out other, cancel each other out so much. It might come down to a referee's decision or the weather or something mad like that. But it's going to be, again, another interesting battle. And yeah, I'll just go with Donegal to edge it. Look, as I said earlier on as well, the... Unfortunately, like you know, we're hopefully we're going to have a good game today, Gal and Tyrone. But unfortunately, there is going to be there's going to be a losing. There's no back door. You know, we're going to have the rest of the championship without either, as I said, Michael Murphy or Conor McKenna. This new star that's come in. 